Hello everybody, welcome to our Inner Healers Web TV. Our topic for this month is abundance and today we will be talking about how gratitude can help us develop abundance in our life. Our very special guest for today is Melanie Greenberg. She's a psychologist and has a PhD in clinical psychology. She's been practicing for more than 25 years. She's a teacher and also writes for um, different magazines and uh, blogs like psychology.com and cnn.com and cosmopolitan.com, etc. So help me welcome Melanie. How are you doing today? Welcome to our show. Hi, Luciana. I'm doing very well. It's good to be here. Thank you for being with us. So tell us, what is abundance for you? For me, abundance is its a state of being mm -hmm. in which you feel connected to all the good things in your life. And that might be the qualities in yourself that you appreciate, um, such as your, your wisdom that you may have gained through experience, your strength, your generosity, as well as um, feeling connected with nature, feeling connected with other people, feeling, feeling that you have healthy relationships, feeling love, um, and just to feel that your life It has a lot of potential and meaning and fulfillment and is filled with good things. So is abundance meant only for some people or can all of us experience abundance? Luckily, I believe that all of us can experience abundance. It's not a matter of having you know, a million dollars in the bank or something like that. Um, in fact, research shows that if you have enough money to meet your basic needs, Um, beyond that level, having more money doesn't make you any happier. And so, you know, although, although our society is so focused on getting more and more and more material things, that's actually not necessarily going to make us happier, and it's, it's, it's the wrong focus for our energy. Uh, so anybody can have abundance because it's how you look at things. It's a state of mind, and it's a state of, of, of body, of spirit. Mm -hmm. So why is it that abundance is usually so elusive in our society? Well, I think part of it is, is because of our culture, um, in, in the media, in the U.S. or in all over the world, for example. You know, the media advertises and you know, they have an, an, a vested interest in making us feel that we, we don't have enough and that we need more and more and more and it may kind of making us feel insecure about our bodies, um, about our intelligence, about our house, our family, so, so that we can buy more products. Uh, so that can kind of, and also the media is always alerting us to, you know, all the things that are going wrong in the world. Um, so that can make us fearful and worried. But also our brains um, are naturally wired for survival. And that's because we were, as early humans, we lived in the jungle in caves and we could be wiped out by tigers or lions or we could die of the cold or of starvation. So our, brain, our brains are wired to scan the environment for threats and so our brains have a natural negative bias and we have to retrain them to be positive. It doesn't necessarily come automatically. Mm -hmm. So how does gratitude, developing gratitude, help us into experiencing abundance? I believe that gratitude can uh, rewire your brain and the, it's, it's, it can teach us to actually move from being controlled by our lower brain centers that are more animal-like, um, such as the amygdala, in the, uh, to our higher brain centers which are uniquely human. So when they look at scans, um, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging scans, they find that um, meditative practice and spiritual practices you know, such as gratitude can uh, change and increase the connection between our more human, higher consciousness to these lower centers. So we learn not to react from fear, but to really have a, a broader view of our lives, uh, so that more feel more connected with others and be more externally focus and connect with the universe mm -hmm. and nature and other people. Mm -hmm. So would you say that meditation is a good tool to experience gratitude? 
Yeah, it's a very powerful tool, um, and not the only tool, because you can also use expressive writing. Um, you can use, you know, a, a series, looking at pictures, um, putting things around you that represent the things and people in your life that you love and appreciate. You can develop rituals. It's a powerful tool just because of the way um, as research has shown that it rewires the brain. It helps us to be present and open up to our experience in the moment. And it also can teach us an attitude of, of embracing and accepting our experience as opposed to judging. And, and it can help us to uh, um, have less negative automatic thoughts, become less depressed. You were talking about how we used to be when we lived in Africa, you know, when we started our development. We used to experience these two responses, which were fight or flight, right? And, right. Um, or freeze, actually. So the third one I forgot to mention is freeze. But yeah, basically. Uh huh. So this kind of development, uh, it has to do with our natural response because we need to preserve our lives, you know, we feel we're being threatened um, and all our body reacts to this. How can gratitude help us center us back? Well, I think that, that when we feel threatened, in terms of what it does to our brain, it very much narrows our focus so that we can only see the threat. And we lose connection with our memories and, and thoughts and feelings about other parts of our lives that are, that are more positive. Um, so meditation for it can help us to, uh, to kind of regain that connection. And I think another thing is that meditation um, can increase our, our inner wisdom, our knowledge of, and tuning into our own experiences in the moment. Without, and when you let go of fear and over time learn to do that, there's a natural feeling of peace and contentment and connection that comes. And, um, and so that goes along with the brain changes and it goes along with kind of having our heart rate by focusing on breathing, which you often do in meditation. It can slow down the heart rate and make it more smooth. And in that way, we, we, we experience more of a sense of coherence of kind of a a mind, body, wholeness, and connection. Um, part of and so gratitude is part of that practice. We may, when we feel connected um, with other people, we may release more oxytocin, which is kind of the bonding hormone that that's, that moms release, you know, when they feed babies, or that's the love hormone. So um, gratitude can increase connection, which can increase our oxytocin. Um, which, you know, is, that, that, that feels really good. What about serotonin? Oh, serotonin? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, when our brain gets re, uh, rewired, and I don't think there's been specific research on serotonin, but, you know, I'll betcha. <laughs> because serot if you, if, we know that serotonin is related to depression. So if you, if you can decrease depression, you, you're probably doing something to serotonin, something mm -hmm. increasing it. Mm -hmm. How can this stay in a coherent state for as much as we can during the day help us experience abundance? Well, abundance is, I think that it opens us to opportunities. Um, it helps us take better care of ourselves. And it helps our focus and feeling of being energized as opposed to kind of, you know, feeling kind of shut down and depressed by being open to, to more open to your experience and more connected with others. Um, you open opportunities that it turns out that you may, it, they've done research um, on gratitude practice in children. And uh, one of the things that they found is that children who practice gratitude have more positive relationships with teachers and friends. And, you know, then if you have those positive relationships, then that opens opportunities for you. You'll have more, you know, resources. You'll have more people invited to more things. You'll have more fun. You'll probably learn more. Um, you'll have more fun when you're learning. You'll be more attentive. Um, for example, um, I'm happy to say I had a good experience with my daughter this month. She is 10 years old. Um, 
And he actually, we went through a stressful move um, from Southern California to Northern California, away from all her friends and family there. Um, and she also ended up having a, um, a pain for a while, arthritis that went away after a while. But um, she went through a difficult time, uh, but she has practiced, you know, tuning in. We, we supported her a lot, and, and our family value is to tune into, you know, the love that you have for your family and the good people in your life and, and the good your health and the good things in your life and, and to try to, you know, feel that you have this and also that you have a responsibility also to, you know, share that with others and do service in the world and, and have compassion for and understanding for others. And um, she was given an award for being a spirit award. She was the first one in her class um, selected by the teacher to be really? spirit award for being a good citizen. And, um, you know, that made her, she actually, tears came to her eyes and she felt so good about it. And I've, I, I had tears came to my eyes. And so it also led to more appreciation for herself, mm-hmm. which was, you know, that's abundance too, is caring for yourself and appreciating your own good personal qualities. That definitely is. You were talking about writing as well, expressive writing. How can this help as a tool to experience abundance? So I've done um, lots of research on expressive writing with college students and also with people with chronic illness. And what writing can do is that it it opens you up um, to your thoughts and feelings. And over time, you can develop a different perspective where, you know, you may, um, for example, if you're writing about stressful events in your life, you can go back to those events. And and if, and when you really you know, let, all, let in the details, you can develop more compassion for yourself, um, for what you went through and how you handled it. And then um, you can also do this, like using instructions. You, you can focus on, you know, on what you have in your life now that may be different or better. And... This is particularly true of college students, and, and this might be because of that developmental stage. Um, you know, that's so you can you can f- see yourself as somebody who survived adversity. Um, you know, who has some good personal qualities like the strength to survive, um, who has brought good people and things into their life, um, worked on themselves, and and to have an appreciation of that. Um, you can also, we, for example, we did some research with um, gay men who had HIV illness, looking at um, depression. Um, this was a graduate student of mine, and so we measured depression at the beginning of the study and three months later, and we controlled statistically for all the medicines that we're taking and all that kind of stuff, exercise and so on. Um, and so we found that um, we measured positive belief appraisals what proportion of the sentences in the essays expressed a a positive belief of some sort. And um, we found those with more positive belief, a higher proportion of positive belief appraisals were less depressed three months later, over and above all the the treatments they were getting. It was more powerful. That's very interesting. Congratulations as well for that. We're getting to the last minutes of our show. Are there any last words you would like to share with the listeners and how... Developing gratitude can help us experience abundance. Sure. Um, well, I think developing gratitude, and a research shows this as well, developing gratitude um, can do many positive things for you. One of the things we know from research by um, Robert Emmons and colleagues at UC Davis is that those people who were taught, you know, over a few weeks where they did gratitude practice, where they deliberately focused on the good things in their lives, um, compared to people who were told to focus on hassles or focus on neutral things, they ended up feeling more alive and energized, and they took better care of themselves. They actually did more exercise. Um, they reported that they were felt more alive and vital um, and happy, more satisfied with their lives. They had more empathy for others. And um, so I believe that, bringing grat- that doing a gratitude practice, and it takes daily practice, um, and consciously tuning in to the good things in your life can help to heal your mind and your body, strengthen your relationships, and um, give you a sense of meaning and contentment in your life that you can then use um, to to go forward and, and bring more positive things in through your actions. 
-hmm. and your relationships. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. We should all do it. Definitely. I will start today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your being with us today. Um, it has been a real pleasure and we hope to have you again soon in 2012. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year. And I believe this is a good time to start a gratitude practice. It definitely is. Thank you for being with us today. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.